In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to use two tools that I use a lot. Those two tools are called Layer Modes and Layer Masks. You will see how these tools can give your photo editing a lot of extra power and will really come in handy when you're learning how to do more involved edits like the images you see in this slideshow. And if you like any of the images in this slideshow and you would also like to learn how I made those, check out my tutorials on my website in the description area below. Okay, so what I'm going to teach you how to do is I'm going to teach you how to take Noah and make him in color and make everything around him in black and white. Um, I'm going to show you what, in my opinion, is the most powerful way to do this, the easiest way to do this, and uh, in my opinion, the best. A lot of people tend to really complicate this process a lot more than it needs to be. So first off, I'm going to show you how to use a combination of layer masks and layer modes to get this done. What we're going to do first is we're going to create a new layer. Hit OK. And we're going to fill that layer with black or white. And note, I hit Shift B to select the bucket tool. Or you could just click on it, whatever works for you. Now you fill it in. And you're going to set your layer mode to color. And see what happened there? Um, what the layer mode color does is it takes whatever color the layer is and makes everything else that color. So if we made this entire layer red, oops, and we used our bucket tool and we filled it in with red, it would make the whole image red. But since we're making it black and white, we filled it with black and then made it all grayscale. Okay. So now the really cool thing about this and the reason why I prefer to do this instead of just clicking colors desaturate is this gives you a lot more power in that you can adjust the opacity down and make it kind of in color, kind of not in color. And you can do this on the fly. You know, maybe you start out and you like it in color and you decide, you know what, I need less color. You've got control with this opacity bar that you can't get with any other tool in GIMP or Photoshop for that matter. So now what we're going to do next is we're going to create a layer mask. What a layer mask does, well first I'll show you how to add one. You just click, right click on the layer that you want to add the mask to and click add layer mask. You can set it to white, full opacity, black, transparency, etc, etc. In this case we're going to set it to white, full opacity. Okay, so now we've got, if you look over here on our layer, we've got two images. We've got a black image and a white image. The white one is our layer mask in this case. The one to the right is the layer mask always. <clears throat> and what the layer mask does is it creates a uh, way to dynamically choose which portion of a layer is visible and invisible. And it does that by laying it out on an image parallel to that image, as you can see over here with the left and the right. So our layer mask, the one to the right, if you brush parts of it with the color black, it makes those parts of that image in color. Because what it did is whatever's black on a layer mask makes the layer it's linked to invisible. In other words, everything I brush makes our black color layer transparent there, thus making it see through unsorts to the color layer underneath, which is our layer Noah. So I hope that makes sense. That really is kind of hard to explain otherwise. Just know that black makes your current layer invisible in those parts, and white does the opposite. If you fill it with white, it makes it visible again. See what I mean? Now you can actually go any color in between. You know, you can go with gray, and it makes it kind of in color not fully, just partially, versus black, which makes it completely. So, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use the pen tool, and we're going to trace Noah. So you get your pen tool, pads tool, I'm sorry, pads tool, the pen tool is Photoshop, and you're just going to start tracing Noah, like so. And whenever you get to sharp corners like this, what you're going to do is you're going to hold in shift 
and move the mouse and then release shift. And that'll break your path. So now you can move it over this way, click here, and keep on going. And for your guys' sake, I'm going to go ahead, I already have it done here, the path, I already traced the path completely, I don't want to make you guys sit there and watch me trace that whole thing. Just know, take your time, and you know, trace it accurately. Now note, I didn't trace these parts here, and that's because we're going to use a different method to get the, take care of those, as well his shoe, as his shoes are not completely traced either, and I'll show you those, how to fix those later. So now what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to right click on our path and we're going to click path to selection. And that, as you can see, as the name suggests, turns the path into a selection. And one more time, what I did was I switched over to my paths dialog. <clears throat> I right clicked on our path and I clicked path to selection. So now that we have a path and we have Noah you know, selected, what we're going to do is we're going to take our bucket tool, or shift B, and we're going to make sure we're on the layer mask, and we're going to fill that with black. And there you go. Hide that path. Okay. So now, you can see Noah is pretty much almost perfectly selected. But what, down here, we have some parts of the grass that was selected in the process and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the paintbrush tool and we're going to you know, use a soft brush and we're going to switch over to white by clicking on these arrows that switches between the foreground and background. We want to use the color white and we're going to just brush off all that extra stuff. We're brushing the color away So once we're done with that, oops, went too far. Once we're done with that, we'll have one more step to do. And that is adding the colors to these, which actually, truth be told, they're black anyway, so there's no point in making that adjustment. So there you go. That's how you do it. Now another cool thing about this is again, since we created the layer mode on top of our layer, we still have control. We can pull this opacity back and adjust what, you know, the rest of the image, how much color is in it. I really said that badly. How much color is in your image based on how transparent this layer is. And one more thing that's really handy about this is if I edit this layer, my original image, if I ever make any edits to it at all, I probably won't have to do anything to fix this effect. If you did this in any other method by duplicating the layer and desaturating it and doing everything else I just did, <clears throat> like other lessons teach, um, you would have to essentially redo that whole effect.